Hello, this is Dennis Polis. Welcome to another Open Philosophy video. Today I'll be continuing the discussion from last time of free will and God's divine omniscience. The fact that God can know everything is very puzzling to people when they come to consider free will. Last time I showed in a simple way why this should not be a puzzle at all. In this video, I will be considering the topic from a more technical point of view, dealing with specific fallacies and misunderstandings. Last time I showed that knowing something happens does not mean that we're the ones making it happen. Still, it's puzzling that God should know what we do before we choose it. When we know something is going to happen before it happens, it's because we can predict it. And if we can predict it, that means the causes are all there which force it to happen before it happens. That's not the way God knows things. God does not know by prediction. God knows by viewing the entire universe, the cosmos, all of space-time from the outside and seeing it all instantaneously as one thing. Because God sees it all as one thing, he doesn't experience time in the same way that we do. He doesn't see things consecutively. He doesn't come to know things as they happen. So he doesn't really know before. Rather, he sees what does happen. He sees the causes leading up to it, and he sees what the causal effects are following from it. In the case of free will, he sees that we're the radical source of our decision. Still, people ask, if God knows in advance, how can I be free? I must choose what I choose. Well, yes, that's true. You must choose what in fact you do choose. But that doesn't mean that you don't choose it. Let me be clear. Before the fact of choice, we have many possibilities open to us. All are in our power. Yet we do choose one. And because we do choose one, that is the one that we choose. There's nothing puzzling about it. Once we've chosen, there are no longer any alternates. We can't go back in time and re-choose. So, once we've chosen, what we've chosen is necessary. But that doesn't mean it was necessary before we chose. This is what's called a conditional necessity. A conditional necessity is one that's true on a certain assumption. Here the assumption is that we've already chosen. If we've already chosen, then necessarily we've chosen what we've chosen. But if we go back to the time before our choice, that condition is no longer true. So the condition that imposes necessity, namely that we have chosen, isn't true because we have not yet chosen. When we have not yet chosen, there is no necessity. God knows this. God knows that many alternatives are in our power. So divine omniscience reinforces our free will because God knows, in fact, that we have choices to be made. The last point I wish to discuss in this video is what is called a modal fallacy. Modal logic is logic that has to do with necessity and possibility. In assuming that God's knowledge of our choice necessitates a choice, there is a fallacy. It's easy to see if we talk about something other than God's knowledge. Let's talk about something very simple, like how many balls there are in an urn. Let's suppose that it's true that there is one ball in an urn. The fact that it is true that the urn has one ball does not make it necessary that it have only one ball. It's very easy for the urn to have more than one ball or no balls at all. The analogy is that there is no way to move from the proposition that God knows what we choose to God knows that we necessarily choose. This means that God's knowledge does not necessitate our decisions. Thank you for watching and please leave comments.